Lissa Productions. Today we're going to be talking about something called time domain analysis. Essentially we're interested in the voltage across this capacitor and the voltage across this resistor as functions of time. The idea is we have a DC power supply connected through a switch to this circuit and at time t equals zero we close this switch so current starts flowing through these two components. And the voltages will then build up or, or, or drop off as a function of time as that current chain flows through. So let's look at how we would do this. The idea is that we have a Kirchhoff loop rule. So the voltage across, the voltage on the VC power supply, V0, minus the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time, minus the voltage across the resistor as a function of time, has to be zero. Remember, the voltage across the capacitor is simply the charge on the capacitor divided by the capacitance. And the voltage across the resistor is the current through the resistor times the resistance. So we have V0 minus Q minus this is zero. That looks a little messy. We've got charge and current. But we also know that the current, I of T, is the time derivative of the charge as a function of time. So that means we can put this in here and we'll have a first order differential equation for charge as a function of time. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to rewrite this. So I'm going to write dq dt plus q 1 over rc equals v0 over r. I get an equation that looks like that. And I'm interested in solving that for the charge as a function of time. Now, there are methods to solve that. My favorite one is simply to guess the solution. And I'm just going to write down a guess here. I'm going to assume guess that Q of T is some final charge on the capacitor, Q final, times 1 minus E to the minus T over some characteristic time tau. So we're trying to find values of Q final and tau that would make this true for all possible times. So let's go ahead and we will plug this into this equation and try to solve this. Okay, so here we have the differential equation, our guess for Q. We need the first derivative, so we'll just simply do that. dQ dt, take the derivative of that. The minus 1 over tau is going to come down. We're going to get a Q final over tau e to the minus t over tau. And now we're going to plug this and this into that expression. And let's just do that. We'll get q final over tau e to the minus t over tau. That's here. Plus q final over rc, 1 minus e to the minus t over tau, has to be equal to v0 over r. Now that looks pretty ugly there. Let's, let me do one more thing here. Let me collect the terms that depend on time, put them together, and the terms that don't depend on time and put them together. So this depends on time, this depends on time. So I'm going to get e to the minus t over tau times q final over tau minus q final over RC, and I'll put the other stuff on the other side. It's V0 over R minus Q final over RC, okay? The only way that this expression could possibly be true for any value of time, because this is changing all the time, is if this is zero and that is zero simultaneously. So that, this one tells us that characteristic time has to be r times c. If you work that out, it's got units of time. And here, the r's are going to cancel. q final has to be v0 times c. So if those two constants, q final and tau, are chosen like this in this expression here, then this will be a solution of that expression. 
So let's go ahead and examine that a little more carefully here. So here's the charge as a function of time. And with that charge, the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time is simply Q of T over C, or is V0, 1 minus E, or C. And what is that doing? It starts out at time T equals 0 at the full voltage, and then this lets it decay away. So V of C as a function of time in units of RC, 3, there's V0. It starts here and decays away exponentially with time. So there's the voltage across the capacitor. So it starts out at V0 at time t equals 0, and it decays away, let's try to get that line on there, exponentially as a function of time. It's something like this. The current is the time derivative of this, and if we do that, we just remember we're going to get the RC down. We're going to get, let's just go ahead and do that, the current as a function of time is going to be V0C over RC, bringing this down, E to the minus T over RC, which is going to be V0 over R, E to the minus T over tau RC. So the voltage across the resistor as a function of time. It's just the resistance times this. It's again, same factor V0, not surprising, E to the minus T over RC. Let's do that in a different color here. We'll do VR of T in red. It starts out at zero and builds up to this exponentially. So it is doing exactly the opposite, and it's doing that. And the sum of the capacitor plus the resistor voltage is always going to add up to the V0, the battery voltage. So that is the time de dependent voltage across these two components here. So given that development there, there's one interesting thing we saw. There was a characteristic time, we called it tau, which was R times C. And this was an RC circuit, so we'll write it as tau RC. There's a characteristic time for this circuit with an R and a C. If we had done this with an R and an L circuit, there would have been a characteristic time for an R and an L, not an R and a C. And that would have just been tau RL equals R over L. So we have these two characteristic times here, R and C for an RC circuit, tau RL for an LR circuit. And those are interesting. They, do, they basically control the rate at which this exponential changes, how long it takes to fall to one-third of its value or rise to one-third of its final value given by this characteristic time. So they're just convenient to talk about things. So there's time domain analysis.